Welcome back to the Pioneer Home. My name is Jenna Lee and I am so glad you guys are here today. Today on this winter day of homemaking, I'm going to share with you guys some really delicious things, some really beautiful things, and some really productive things. With the days feeling cold and the sky feeling dreary, most days, chores and homemaking can feel mundane. So this week, I really was focusing on finding the beauty and the joy and making it fun again. I felt hungry for making something that was not only delicious, but beautiful. So I'm starting out some sourdough brioche. This is a rich and decadent dough full of eggs and butter and sugar Brioche sounds fancy and maybe complicated, but it's actually a very forgiving dough. This particular recipe has something called a poulish, which is just flour and yeast and water mixed together. The poulish and the sourdough make this dough extra light and fluffy. You can make several things from brioche. You can enjoy it just as a loaf of bread or as fluffy, delicious rolls. Or you can make donuts, um, all sorts of beautiful cakes, danishes. So today I thought it would be really fun to make some beautiful little danishes with cream cheese and blueberry filling. And then we're going to also save some of this dough for some donuts. There is plenty of it. The moment I said the word donuts, the kids were all in and they just had to get their hands in this dough. The recipe that I'm using today is from a book called Tartan Bread, and it is written by a baker out of California who makes the most delicious sourdough bread in a bakery. All of the recipes are very thorough, and everything that I've made thus far, when I follow the instructions <laughs> perfectly, turn out to be delicious. That being said, I actually did miss a step here. Um, you can wonder why I was so distracted with all these little people asking me questions about donuts, but I was supposed to mix the dough and bring out the gluten before adding the butter. But you know what? It actually turned out just great. I find that sometimes things don't go as perfectly as planned and sometimes it's a beautiful result sometimes it's not and but wh whatever it is whatever the result is we eat it all the same and um, it's enjoyed anyway like I said this recipe is very forgiving as long as you have that poolish that is nice and fluffy and ready to go you can give it a float test by pinching a piece of the poolish off and putting it in a cup of water and if it floats then it's ready to be used. If it sinks to the bottom, then it needs to sit there and rise a bit more. The same goes for sourdough as well. I always get it a float test before I pour it into my mixture. If you just pinch off a piece of your sourdough starter, put it in the water. If it floats, then it's ready. If it doesn't, then it needs to be fermented a bit longer. The rising agent is so important and I found that as long as the sourdough or the yeast mixture is healthy and ready, then it all turns out beautiful. I do make four loaves of sandwich bread every week and I just needed a break from the mundane. Like I said, I try to challenge myself each week to make something aside from my sandwich loaves, something a little extra, learn something new. And this week I was just craving something beautiful. Even organizing a total chaos can feel joyful if you have your heart in the right place. And I'm not saying mine always is, but I have to remind myself that when my heart is in the right place, any boring old task can glorify the Lord, my home, it can be a service for the ones that I love. And suddenly, mundane things can look beautiful. I do have to say that putting my hands to something creative and artistic makes my homemaking heart just sing. Yeah. 
And putting your hand to something that is productive and has a beautiful result has a way of pulling you out of a slump. So if you are particularly feeling the winter blues, which even I get this time of year, pop in some vitamin D, eat your vegetables, and put your hand to something productive, something beautiful. The other day I went on a winter walk and gathered some twigs and branches in hopes to create some sort of natural decoration. Whatever the season, I like my home decor to reflect what is happening in the outdoors. And right now, this is all that is pretty much happening outside, brown and white. I was inspired by the natural look of these paper hearts. You just have to take out a few pages from an old book that you're not going to read. And so I had an old encyclopedia sitting around just for decor purposes and pulled a few pages from there, cut them into strips. I'm going to make three layers in these paper hearts. So I need two pieces for each layer. I just need a longer piece, a medium piece, and a shorter piece. And I'll show you how I staple that all together to create these layered paper hearts with just a stapler, some pages from a book, and a little bit of twine. I picked up a little bit of decor foam with this shaped vase in mind. I thought I would create some sort of table centerpiece for Valentine's Day. So my idea is to take all of our branches and twigs that we picked up from the forest and put them into this vase with the foam and hang these paper hearts off of them and hopefully create something beautiful. It's going to take some craftiness. This is the extent of my creativity for the week but it feels good to just do something creative put some natural elements together and just see what happens my kids went outside on a little nature walk the other day for homeschool and gathered some natural elements from the forest made a graph chart out of what they found they picked up some moss and i thought it was so beautiful there were times living in the high desert that i used to buy moss from the home decor store. And so just to be able to find moss to add to a bit of a project makes me so happy. My hearts weren't quite hanging the way that I liked them. So I heated up my hot glue gun and just put a little dab right in the center of the heart just to keep that string centered so that they would hang straight. I don't usually do a lot of decorating for Valentine's Day, but since we just got done putting away a lot of our holiday stuff, it feels a little drab. It feels a little bit empty. 
and it was fun to put something up. I also held on to some flowers that I had from a bouquet that I bought just recently. I saved some of the flowers, dried them out, and I thought I would just add some of these little tiny roses to our centerpiece for a touch of color. I think my kids thought I was kind of weird for adding dead flowers to our piece here, but I think it's beautiful. I think dried flowers are beautiful. Let me know what you think about dried flowers. Um, how do you decorate for winter time? What do you usually do between the window of Christmas and spring? So we're coming back to our brioche dough. We made it yesterday and it had time to sit on the counter and to ferment for a few hours. Then I put it into the freezer just for an hour or two and then into the fridge to stop the fermentation process. I pulled the dough out this morning and rolled it into some round dough balls. Um, in whatever shape that you're gonna make it into, put it into that shape and let it rise. Now I'm just making our cream cheese filling by getting six ounces of cream cheese, mixing it with a couple tablespoons of sugar and some vanilla extract. I warmed it up for just a little bit and whipped it together. So when your dough is nice and fluffy, that's when it's ready to add the filling. I just needed to make a little indent in this dough for our filling. I'm also putting together some blueberry filling. I just do about two cups of frozen blueberries, add about one fourth a cup of sugar, a tablespoon or so of cornstarch, a little bit of lemon juice, and just a splash of water. And I let that boil here on the stove until it's nice and thick. This recipe was really just inspired by a picture that I saw online. So I'm not really following an exact recipe, just whooping up what I have up in my mind based on a picture that I saw. For the indentation in our little danishes, I found it easier to just tap my fingers into some flour and create a round indentation in the rolls. I really want my filling to, to have a little dish here in this danish and then have the sides puff up around it. I could have done a deeper indentation because it really rose up and kind of spilled over some of the filling. So keep that in mind. It's almost painful squishing down these fluffy rolls, but it's all for the sake of a delicious filling. And I have to say that more was better in this case. So I'm gonna put in my cream cheese filling, my blueberry filling, and then put it in the oven at 350 degrees until it's just golden around the edges. I baked them for about 18 minutes. I did watch them closely. The rest of the dough we made, well, not the rest of it, actually half of this dough, this is only half of the dough. The other half is still in the fridge, but the half of this portion of the dough we did make into donuts. And so we are gonna be making those up for tomorrow morning. I'm gonna cover them with saran wrap and put them into the fridge. Although make sure to cover them nice and well to keep in the moisture. Um, they did get a little crusty, but they were still delicious, of course. The next morning, we just pulled out our donuts, and I put them underneath the light in my oven to warm them up a little bit. And then we prepared some oil here on the stove. I'm just using some vegetable oil and cooked up those donuts, made a little bit of maple glaze with powdered sugar, a little bit of milk, and some maple extract. 
and they were absolutely divine. I saved some of that blueberry filling so that we could make some blueberry filled donuts as well. I didn't want to go through the trouble of pulling out all my piping bags for four donuts, so I just used a butter knife to make a hole in these light and fluffy donuts. I filled it in with the rest of our big chunky blueberry filling, and then I also made a separate little lemon glaze for the blueberry filled donuts. And this brioche show makes the most delicious donuts. Such a wonderful flavor. I've also wanted to tackle the project of organizing and cleaning out underneath the kitchen sink. Now, I can't believe I'm going to show this to you guys. It's super embarrassing, the current state of underneath my kitchen sink. But I bet that most of you probably wouldn't want to share underneath your kitchen sink on social media either. So I thought that maybe we could organize and clean this out together. I wanted to start out by sifting through here and seeing what has piled up. So I'm going to go through everything that's underneath the kitchen sink, organize it, get rid of some things that we don't use, and give it a good scrubbing and a cleaning. Something had spilt underneath the mat that I had put in here, some sort of cleaner that had turned hard, so I needed to scrape that off and give the whole cupboard a good vacuum and a complete wipe down. Oftentimes, projects like this can feel daunting, overwhelming, or chaotic, especially if the clutter in the space is chaotic. But buying some new organizers or a little basket from the thrift store, making a little plan can make it so much easier to tackle. I'm just spraying the cabinet down with some vinegar spray that we have made together as well. Okay, so I got a couple things to organize underneath the kitchen sink. I got this liner to, I don't know, make it look pretty. I guess this is just removable, adhesive, ideal for resurfacing and decorating. We'll see if I really wanna use this. I just, they matched, so I got both of them. This, on the other hand, I thought would be handy for keeping water in case there's ever drips or cleaner leaks or something. Having some sort of liner on the bottom of underneath your sink is wise. So I got some liner and some of this in case we want to do that as well. My favorite part of today's project are these shelves. I hope these work good. I'm, I'm gonna let you know if they do. This is not a sponsored video or anything. This is just a little homemaker trying to find a solution for her crazy um, cabinet underneath the sink. So I found these two shelves from Amazon and what attracted me to these shelves was that the bottom portion slides out. So, you know, things tend to get lost in the depth of the cabinet underneath the sink. So I thought having something that pulled out would be nice. I'll put a link down below if you um, are looking for something similar. But I ended up putting this mat. It didn't stick to the actual cabinet. So this would be good if you had a rental or something. It's not permanent by any means. And I cut it out to the shape of underneath the sink. I had to cut around the portion where the piping went down. And I also had to add an additional uh, three inches or so to the back of the cabinet. But overall, it was able to cover the base of the cabinet in case there's any leaks or spills that can protect the wood cabinet. I chose not to put up the adhesive um, tack paper around the walls of the cabinet. I thought the wood was pretty enough and I, I liked it that way. Plus it saved me a lot of time not doing that. I also added a dab of a little bit of glue in the corners just to keep that mat from sliding around. The one thing about these shelves is I wasn't sure how they were going to attach. And then I figured out that they didn't attach at all to the bottom. I think the weight of, of the objects inside of them is what's going to keep them on here. So we'll see how it works. I also decided to pull out things from the boxes that they came in and put them into baskets. So I pulled out all of the garbage bags, put them in a cute basket. My goal was to just keep the necessities underneath this kitchen sink, things that I would actually be using. Some of the things though, we don't use all the time, like a manual to the dishwasher. So I put that clear in the back. 
um, along with a few things that we don't use all the time but still use, like bottles for water kefir I'm putting back here. And the things that we readily use all the time I'm putting in the shelves. I also put all of our dishwasher pods into a cute little basket in here so that they are easy to grab. I also have a few empty glass spray bottles and plastic spray bottles that I use for multiple things in the house. I make some of my own cleaners. I like to use concentrated cleaners as well. So I try to keep plenty of those on hand. And sometimes I keep some of these empty plastic ones in the very back just to put water in, in case I wanna spray that on my sourdough. We also had some fly traps and ant bait and a few things of that sort floating around in the cupboard. So I decided to collect all of that and put it in a container so that I could shut and be tucked away so that no babies or children or toddlers would be able to find them and get into those. And also so that they wouldn't be floating around anymore and that they would have a collective place to go. I've been making an online order for some groceries at Walmart once a week for just things that I need. One of those things I threw in there was a tension rod. I thought about hanging a cafe curtain up above the sink for today's video, but instead I put this little tension rod to use, um, hanging our paper towels and a few things like poultry string and some twine. These are just some things that I use regularly. And instead of having them up in the cupboards or floating around on the cabinet space, I'm going to have them tucked under here on this tension rod. So it seems even though that these shelving units don't have a place to attach into the actual cabinet themselves, the weight of the cleaners and things that are in them are keeping them together. What's on the right side are sponges and some different household cleaning products. On the right side, I have dish soap, some lotion, and all of my cleaning spray bottles and just a couple things in the very back. But most of what I use is right up here, front and center, um, and easy to reach. And I really do like having my paper towels down here um, and off of the kitchen counter. I also put up some command hooks that I had thrown in my grocery cart as well. Um, over here on the cabinet door so that I could hang a few scrub brushes as well. I find that always having some command hooks somewhere in the kitchen, um, easy to put up, is very useful for hanging up towels, sponges, um, scrubbies, your apron, whatever it may be. It's a good thing to have on hand. I think it's also a good time of year with spring just around the corner to be thinking about picking up a few new sponges, um, looking at your kitchen sink and seeing how your scrub brushes are doing or how your dishcloths are doing. Is there anything that needs maintenance? Anything that's getting a little smelly needs a refresh. Um, I get by a lot of times by actually bleaching my sponges, my scrub brushes. I try to make things last as long as I can but I recently did order some fresh new sponges and some fresh new scrub brushes because mine were just beyond any more use. And now I have this organized space underneath the kitchen sink. I hope that we can keep it organized for some time, um, but it's nice to have a place for everything and I'm really happy with how it turned out. I would love to hear some of your ideas, so let's chat in the comments down below as well. I will also be putting down cookbooks and anything that I use in this video that might be helpful to you down in the description box below. Make sure to check that out. I hope that this video was encouraging and inspiring and helpful for you um, during this winter season of homemaking. And I hope to see you next week with a brand new video and I'll catch you later. Love you lots.